Hey guys, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Today, I'm going to talk about something that has nothing to do with politics or the, anything about that. Um, it has to do with aging and certain things that, or details that I notice as we age. And um, now, I'm only going to bring the, bring Nancy Pelosi in only in the context of this conversation, right? All the time I'm seeing Nancy Pelosi is today. The hair, the face, the eyebrows, um, what's left of them. And, um, and then there's footage of her speaking, I think it was, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And you could not tell, that's the same woman. The same thing with Nadler and the same thing with Elijah Cummings, who, as you know, passed away. And when they were doing uh, the um, memorial, they showed some early footage when he first came to Congress. And I'm like, wow. There's like a huge difference. Now, I do know that stress makes a person age faster. So that the more stress you have in your life, the quicker you age. And uh, that's why presidents who have a very stressful uh, occupation and live very stressful lives, they age very, very quickly. Um, but so you have both Nancy Pelosi and Hydra Cummings years ago. Same thing with Charles um, Schumer. Uh, there was an old clipping of um, Schumer and doesn't look like the same man. He looks different, very different. And so I began and I saw a couple of early videos that I did with the uh, lip sync and miming and uh, you know some of the first ones that I did and I said wow I didn't know I had bushy eyebrows and look at my mustache you know my mustache looked looked very much like my cousin who uh, cousin Kevin and it was really cousin Kevin who inspired me to grow a mustache because with a mustache, my cousin Kevin looked so handsome and so dapper. And he's the only member of my family that actually has a mustache. So to me, that was a novelty. And, uh, and that's what inspired me to grow a mustache. Uh, um, and now he doesn't have the mustache anymore. But he still looks handsome. Cousin Jay, um, he and Cousin Elaine, they both, they look great for their age. They both look great for their age, but they look so different. And, um, but you notice these things about aging. Now, you see my eyebrows, they have not been trimmed at all. And you notice, um, this is more hair on that corner than this does. And um, most likely I'm going to lose my eyebrows. And uh, losing one's hair, I can understand. <coughs> because that's the really the big thing you notice, is the hair on top of the head. Um, my grandparents and my my father um, 
I started losing my hair also at a young age. So hair on top and my best friend. My best friend of over 40 years. You know, he had a huge bush of hair when we first met in high school. Now, um, he's like, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, where did hair, where does hair go? But I said, okay, okay, he's in his 50s. Like, I'm in my 50s. I can understand that. Where did my hair go? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But eyebrows and because of that, I began to take a close look at eyebrows. And many women like to um, perfect their eyebrows so they're more aerodynamic, they're more smooth. And to me, I, I pay attention to eyebrows. And every, every woman who I see pictures of, their eyebrows are so, when they're young, when they're like in their 20s and 30s, their eyebrows are very, very distinctive. And whether they have a Nike swerve to it or some other swerve, you know, I noticed that. I noticed that. And they may be wider here and thinner here or or narrower you know each person has different shape of eyebrows and I, and I never paid that much attention to it until recently and so I look and, and every time I get my hair cut um, and they said, I'm going to trim your eyebrows. I'm like, oh, no, please don't trim my eyebrows. You know what? I'm just going to look like, a, uh, I don't know. You know, but uh, of course the eyebrows come back. You know, but, um, but when I get a haircut and they don't trim the eyebrows, then I get concerned. When they don't trim the eyebrows when you get your hair cut, you're like, oh my God. I mean, is this, you know, it's like, oh my God, I'm getting old. You know, if I lose my eyebrows, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just petty. It's like worrying about stupid stuff. I understand that. It's, uh, right now, I, um, I'm very upset that I've lost a lot of agility and my mobility and uh, I'm fighting to regain that. My eyesight, very important to me. My hearing, very important to me. So it's, even though I'm, I might talk about eyebrows, you know, it's like, well, come on, Jim, there's more important things to worry about losing than your eyebrows. But um, it, it's something that I notice, and um, and of course my mustache. Um, I try to keep it trim. I have a terrible time shaving because it always never comes out even. And um, and ever since I donned mustache in my twenties, um, I never could get it trimmed just right. The corner's just right, so it looks even. I have a tough time trying to hang a picture and uh, using two nails. And, um, and even if I use a, a, a level to make sure that the, the nails are uh, a straight line, the picture never gets hung right. It, it, there's always a slant to it because I'm not mechanically inclined like that. Um, but when it comes to the quarters of my mustache, no matter how much, how, how much I try. But look at my mustache now. Yeah, okay, it's, it's salt and pepper color. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. And uh, I understand that. You know, from what 
few years ago when, uh, when it was all black. Okay, okay, I get that. I understand that. And I live with it. Sure, I understand that. No problem. I can live with it. But the eyebrows, they're thinning out somehow. They're not as dark. They're not as thick. They're not as wide. And they're not as bushy. You know, it's a and sometimes some of the hair in my eyebrows get right into my line of sight and I can see it off the top of my right there, you know. And then it says, yeah, I think the eyebrows are too long. Each hair is too long. Yeah, trim it so it's not on my eyes. But now, I don't think, I don't think my eyebrow hair is even trying to get into my line of my sight. I don't know. But, um, and because of this, because of this, I look at people's eyebrows. And because somehow the eyebrows, um, now what's really, really interesting about eyebrows is I learned very early on about eyebrows watching Sesame Street. Because, Whoa, <laughs> because of Ernie and Bert, right? Ernie has no eyebrows, but Bert has this eyebrow that goes right across, you know. So, and then when, in the early days of Sesame Street, when Gordon would put, uh, give features to the editing people, the editing Muppets, uh, how about some fine, sturdy eyebrows? And then some of the Muppets didn't get eyebrows. So, eyebrows are really a distinctive feature on a person's face, you know. And I learned this as a kid watching Sesame Street with Ernie and Bert and some of the editing people. When Gordon used to put facial features on uh, the editing people, the editing Muppets. Some Muppets got eyebrows, some didn't. And it's like, why didn't this person get eyebrows? Why did he get eyebrows and this person didn't? Why does Bert have eyebrows and not Ernie? You know. Um, so, you become aware of eyebrows at a very early age because of that. You know. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm 56, I'm going to be 57 next month, so, um, it's something I can't, I can't stop imagining, you know, it's like, will this woman still keep, have her eyebrows? What happened to this woman's eyebrows? What was it before? You know, every time I look at a person my age, should be, it's like, okay, like, um, Dan Florek on um, Law and Order SVU. You know, the first time we see him is the age that he's at. And I'm like, I want to see some early footage. I want to see. Uh, here's another perfect example. Eric Braden on The Young and the Restless who did Victor Newman. When I first really paid attention to Eric Braden, he was really young. He, ha he had this presence about him with the mustache, you know, and the eyebrows and the hair and everything. But now you look at him and he's a frail man. Same thing with um, Christopher uh, Lloyd, right? And... I really paid attention to Christopher Lloyd in Back to the Future. But oh man, did he age. Everybody's aging and aging fast. You know, I see um, 
um, William Shatner. And what is this about gaining weight? I can never tell. Why do some people gain weight and other people don't? Fred Astaire. Fred Astaire in the Towering Inferno. I'm sure he's as old as uh, 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 William Shatner now. You know. Um, I'll give you another one. Um, um, oh, what's his name? Jack Lemmon. Jack Lemmon, that's another actor, right? You see Jack Lemmon in the Out of Towners. You see Jack Lemmon in um, Airport 77. You see Jack Lemmon in uh, in um, uh, China Syndrome. And then you look at Jack Lemmon in uh, Inherit the Wind with um, um, uh, uh, Scott. You know, um, it's like, what happened to him? Here's another one. Here's another one. How about uh, William Devane? William Devane is another guy, right? And I, I saw him in, uh, when he, I forget what movie it was, but it was about the Kennedy, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. I forget what movie that was. He really looked like a JFK, and he spoke like JFK. And if you want to wonder what JFK would look like had he lived, look at William Devane. Look at William Devane when he's doing his uh, uh, Rosalind Capital uh, commercials. Because he, he really came across as JFK in that movie. And then he was in uh, Free Fall. Like 174. That was really the first time I ever saw William Devane. And he made a great pilot in uh, Free Fall Flight 187. Great movie, great movie. And he, he, he's a great actor. He really is a great actor. And then I go see, the, then I watch this other movie um, where he plays JFK, much, much younger, of course. And I'm like, wow, look at him. I mean, I could say, oh, my God, he looks just like JFK. And he talked like him, too. So if you ever wonder what JFK would be like, look like, and sound like, had he lived, look at William DeBain doing those Rosalind Capital commercials. That's JFK right there. You know, if you really look at it. Hi, I'm William DeBain. Uh, no, you're JFK. You're John Fitzgerald Kennedy. That's who you are. You're not William today. You played that role so well. Every time I look at him now, because to me, he will always be the pilot on Flight 174. Until I saw this movie when he played JFK. You know, once then I then I would look back at this movie where he played the pilot. Just, Hey, that's JFK flying the plane. Because he, he did that so well, you know. And look at him now, you look at him. He, 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 he you know. And then, um, um, oh, here's another one. Um, Merit, um, Burgess Meredith. Burgess Meredith. He's more well known being Rocky's trainer, right? Not me, not me. When I think about uh, Burgess Meredith, I don't think of Rocky's trainer. I don't think of him as the Penguin. I look at him as being um, Romney Wordsworth and uh, Henry Bemis on the Twilight Zone. Burgess Meredith will always be Romney Wordsworth and Henry Bemis. Always. Always. Well, it, it's just that my wife won't let me read at home. When I go up to grab a newspaper, she yanks it out of my hands. It, it, it got so desperate that I began reading the condiment labels on the table. And now she won't even let me use the ketchup. Oh, it's not fair. 
It's not fair at all. There was time now. There was there was all the time I needed. Um, I, I'm a very rich man. Now, I, I said I, I'm a very rich man, but I have such a luxury of choices. I would like to choose the manner for which um, uh, to tell my uh, execution. Um, okay, how, how did I go again? Simply that you are to assign me my assassin, but only he and I will be the only ones who know how I am to die. Oh, yes, yes. Just just one more request. I would like to die with an audience. I have no doubt. How will you stay your, how will you spend your last Yes, yes, I've locked the door. Question. How does a man know that he's to be blown to bits within an hour? Answer. That all depends upon the individual. So for myself, I will sit here and read my Bible. So it's the only thing that has any value at all to me. I'm just going to sit here and read it. How will you spend your last moments, Chancellor? Oh, no, forget. Don't bother. You, you said isolate the person about to be liquidated. That's what you said. You said so yourself. So why did you step over the light and look into the cameras? It's very important. You said so yourself. Burgess Meredith, Romney Wordsworth, and Henry Bemis. Not Rocky Strader. Not the Penguin. And not um, Grumpy Old Man. And I saw the... Um, because the grumpy old man was like the last things he did. You know, Burgess Meredith. Um, oh, and the, and, and the devil in that um, hour long. You know. Uh, you really weren't going to throw yourself over the bridge, were you? I was the one that stopped you. Uh, I'm going to do some um, um, uh, mo uh, modifications to your line of type machine. And anything that I type in there happens. Uh, oh, no, 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 I can't, you know. He was so good, Burgess Meredith. And look how he aged over the years from his time on the Twilight Zone and all the way through the Rocky films up to Grumpy Old Man. I mean, damn. And it's just amazing. And, and um, Henry Fonda, Henry Fonda from uh, 12 Angry Men, all the way down to A Golden Pond, would even go further than that, uh, Roller Coaster. Um, oh, what was the line? When was the last time you feel this back to check the rides? Have they checked the roller coaster? It just collapsed. People are dead. Find out if there's negligence involved. It just so happens to be my wedding anniversary. And we found that. Look different then that he did in Twilight and Men. I don't know. Oh, there were 11 votes for guilty. It's not easy for me to put my hand up and setting a boy off to die without talking at first. Talking about it first. Well, so aging, aging. Something I notice all the time. William Shatner. William Shatner. I was 
Now, everybody thinks of William Shatner in the episode uh, Nightmare at uh, 20,000 Feet. I remember him in the nook of time. What's the word, Polly? I did? I got it. I got it. Oh, thank, thank you very much, Polly. Yes, yes. We'll send the card right when we get there. You're looking at the first up, this office manager. Yeah, well, he told me to. Do you have another uh, penny? Uh, why was it so precise? Maybe the same, maybe not the same condiments, not the same as the same condiments. Do you think I could just walk away? I don't know. Can you just have me just walk away? This machine is predicting, you know. You're right. We will live wherever we want and go wherever we want, whenever we want to. Great actor, William Shatner. Before the, before Star Trek. And now you look at him. Doesn't look the same, does it? You look at him and you think that that's not James Kirk. And then you see some of the Star Trek episodes. It's like I can't be the same actor. <coughs> Me? Yeah. I I think of myself as a child. My mom. You know, the relationship I have with my mom. Who would have thought I would end up here? Not that this is a bad place, but I hope, I hope I can leave here. Get a projector, build up my films again. Oh! I meant to tell you. The other day I was looking on uh, eBay. And, uh, yeah, they pretty much had the same 60 millimeter films. Um, nothing really to replace what I had. And then I said, eh, the heck with I'll, I'll check out powder strips. I don't expect to see anything. Now, there are some sellers that uh, are willing to sell 45s along uh, and pass them together. But um, not like what I had. And then somebody offers a million jukebox title strip for $10,000. And he showed a picture boxes and boxes, five or six boxes high, several uh, several piles, each pile with these dull, I don't know, dull pineapple or orange boxes, filled with envelopes and sleeves, loaded with title strips, a million title strips, think about that. A million partnerships. Could this be the lot that could not only replace what I lost, but there might be more stuff in there that could eliminate my want list? But I don't have $10,000. And they're not going by yet. And they said it's free shipping. I'm sorry, free pickup. But as far as film is concerned, that took 10 years to build. 10 years from now, I'll be 60, 66. I was 46, I was 15. It's like every 20 years I lose it. Like 20 years of building it up. 1978 to 1998 to 19, 2018, you know, it's like, 
Every 20 years, I, I build up my film collection, and it's gone. And you're really, really only lucky if you get to replace it. But anyway, that's another topic. But anyway, that's basically what I want to talk about. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.